Hi, I'm Kristen Kelton, and I am a woo. That's right, I like to win others over. I can talk to anyone, anytime, anywhere. In fact, I have proof. Years ago, a principal had the staff complete the Clifton Strengths Assessment. And yes, one of my top five strengths is being a woo. Being a people person has led to my success over the last 27 plus years of being in education. I almost quit teaching after just three years, but we really wanted to move to another state and I got an opportunity teaching again. And I'm really grateful I did. It's been a wonderful experience. A few years after I was hired in my current school district, my principal asked me, do you know why I hired you? And I said, no. He said, it had nothing to do with your two degrees, your three years of teaching experience, or even the fact that you've done research. It was because when I asked you about kids, your eyes lit up. It was so evident that you have a passion for teaching children and you knew how to build relationships. And building relationships is the key to this business. In fact, years later in 2007, I got to go to a national conference in Washington, DC and speak on behalf of my middle school. And I discussed the importance of building relationships with our students because it is that important in teaching. Now I'm a natural woo, and this has blessed me over the years. Being somebody who could build relationships with their students increases academic performance, increases the students' motivation and their engagement in the classroom. Moreover, building relationships with students improves your classroom management. Students work harder for teachers they like and respect. It also improves peer relationships. There's a sense of belonging. The students don't feel quite so isolated. Professors in college who make connections with their students find those students are more likely to stick it out and graduate from college. They also go on to become college donors and they speak highly about the institution. Reputation is everything. Now I'm a natural woo. Winning others over comes naturally to me. But what if you are not one of those people? Can you still build student relationships? Yes, you can if you follow these five steps. First, let's discuss classroom structure. In a face-to-face -face classroom like this one, it's important that smaller class sizes are constructed around effective seating arrangements. This encourages dialogue and collaboration. You should also start every class by greeting students at the door by name. And don't lecture. In the classroom, use higher order cognitive thinking activities and collaboration. If you must directly deliver instruction, use a flipped classroom where students watch videos outside of class. Online instructors, they can make connections with their students through Zoom and other video applications. Students and staff can post their videos and get to know each other instead of just being words on a screen. Both online and in the classroom teachers need to create the ideal learning conditions. And that is a safe and supportive environment. High expectations. Give achievable yet challenging goals. Praise good behavior. Use consistent policies and be flexible. Things happen in life. We need to be flexible in our requirements and helping those students to become successful. Number two, get to know your students. Learn their names, their learning styles, personal interests, and their needs. Use open dialogue, listen, be honest, give and request feedback. The Office of the State Superintendent of Education in Washington, DC offers a great strategy called the two by 10 strategy. Spend two minutes for the next 10 consecutive days getting to know just one student. Another way you can get to know students and for them to get to know each other is to use surveys or icebreakers. And above all, if you have a student who's really struggling and you need to make that connection with that student, offer to become a mentor. Mentorships are very powerful. Once you've created the proper seating arrangements in your classroom, once you've gotten to know your students, take step three. Improve your outside of class communication with your students. This can be as simple as sponsoring a club or taking part in an intramural sport. Become a participant. Go to their sporting events, their concerts, and their plays. Nothing speaks more highly than a teacher who takes time out of their personal day to go watch their students. 
College professors especially should offer convenient office hours, convenient both for time and location. In fact, some studies now suggest having a student-centered space where the professors go and be there for the students. In online teachers, this can be tough, but make yourself available as much as possible. Promise to try to get back to messages and emails within a short time period, say 24 hours. Let's be honest, teaching can be difficult. Students aren't always gonna share the same opinions as we do. So don't let those differing opinions destroy relationship building efforts. Be inclusive and be aware that there are differences. Encourage open dialogue, learn to listen, even if the things you hear are things you don't wanna hear. By listening, sometimes we can find the root cause of what happened to form a student's particular beliefs. Now, it's not necessarily the objective to change their opinion, but to understand where they're coming from allows us to have empathy. As the University of Colorado at Boulder suggests, seek common ground with your students. Be open-minded, listen first, speak second. Use effective communication skills. Using open-ended questions, summarizing and reflecting are great skills to have. And lastly, if a situation does come up that you don't know much about, do your own research. Come back and have that open dialogue conversation with that student. Now, if you have set up your classroom correctly, gotten to know your students, communicated outside of the classroom, and learn to deal with differing opinions other than your own, and you're still struggling to build those relationships, take the fifth step. Ask for professional development. It's okay as a teacher to say that sometimes we need more training, because we do. As I reflect on my 27 plus years in education, I realize that God has me and my woo abilities exactly where he wants me. It reminds me of what Del Tackett from Focus on the Family said about the Christian worldview. We are here to do what God has planned for us, to be moral, to love others, to bring people to Christ, or at least make them better people. God has us in the roles of educators for his purposes and his reasons. He did not choose us to be educators because of our knowledge about some subject. He chose us to lead, teach, encourage, and prepare the future generations. And the cornerstone for creating and developing that future generation is us building relationships with the kids. He made me a woo in my ability to build relationships. He picked you because he knew that you too could make a difference. Don't forget that. Now go forge some relationships. Thank you.